Merci, euh, merci d'être venu nombreux. Merci. Thank you. Thanks uh, for being here, and I would also like to welcome the people who are listening to us uh, in English uh, through this uh, web stream. So I'm sorry for this. I'm trying to. I'm going to stay. Pardon, je vais faire ça en français. Je vais rester un peu derrière ce. So I'm going to stay right here behind the rostrum for most of my uh, presentation. And uh, again, thank you for your indulgence. Donc le merci Jean-Emmanuel aussi d'avoir euh, Jean-Emmanuel thanks for uh, making this brief introducing as you heard uh, the theme of today's conference is creativity creating objects creating experiences that you can share online I would like to uh, take this opportunity to place this in you know the general context of the fragrance project and the fragrance technology FSDL doesn't exist alone. FSDL is a language and it is only a component of the fragrance technology. So I would like to tell you um, a little bit about the overall fragrance landscape. Here, um, so what are we talking about? Sorry. We're talking about uh, online publishing. Online publishing is a very vast, a very large world. We like to look at it as an ocean. It, uh, it started about 20, 30 years ago. And since the outset, there have been lots of opportunities. Uh, we started off by uh, creating very rudimentary uh, pages. New technologies emerged, developed, grew. And today, there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of solutions out there should you be interested in publishing online. Uh, again, online means internet. There are a lot of solutions for you to use uh, technology to publish something from point A to uh, uh, multiple destinations. For example, if I, A, wish to publish information available to multiple points B, it's pretty easy. I can, uh, you know, develop something from scratch, develop a website, I can use HTML. You know, there are all kinds of options, all kinds of features, uh, maybe too many features sometimes. HTML pages, HTML codes are not always seen and uh, interpreted the same way by browsers. Depending on the type of browser you're using, the uh, it may not be read the same way. There is a lot of literature, as a matter of fact, out there. Um, how a given function could be interpreted in different ways depending on the browser you're using. And of course, this means a lot of testing and m multiple developments sometimes need to be done. And I'm not even mentioning or referring to mobile technology. Simply desktop computers. With desktop computers, it is complicated enough as it is. So this, this uh, technology is used by millions, hundreds of millions of people. So again, using web technologies. There is another category, um, mobile apps. This is more recent, obviously. I think everybody is uh, familiar with uh, these things and, and the App Store, Android, the Android Store, and uh, there are some smaller ones as well. Uh, the downside, uh, the benefit is that it's, it's the mobility, uh, but it is very fragmented. You have to publish one version or one release of an app on the App Store and one on Android and then you want to make sure that it works the same way or in a similar way and uh, it, you know it also involves a lot of testing so it's a good way to reach out to a specific audience although um, it's not easy to get onto uh, stores I was reading uh, no later than this morning um, about this app which was developed to track drone attacks uh, by the US Army. 
it had been initially accepted, uh, you know, after negotiations with Apple, and um, eventually it was declined, and so it's not available. So you can use a platform, um, but uh, there is quite a bit of control, of a third-party control which is exerted uh, upon you. The third solution is proprietary, uh, proprietary, proprietary technology. For, for example, publish an app on Facebook. With Facebook, you're likely to reach a, 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 a very broad audience, but you're, it's, you're not at home. It's a private company. It's a company which will decide uh, whether your, uh, your content is acceptable, it can survive, or should die. And there have been some legal concerns um, also regarding uh, information that has been published on Facebook. So clearly there are content issues, there are some security issues as well, uh, privacy, but, uh, because you post information and but the information you post on Facebook becomes the ownership of Facebook which, which makes things a little complicated to manage so this is um, the landscape and the fact is that there are no real satisfactory solutions So this is where Frogan's technology comes in. It is right there, the red fish. The red fish which is coming to simplify things. And that is really what Frogan's is all about. It's about making online publishing available to everyone making it easier, simpler, no testing, no multi-platform testing, no privacy, no uh, data protection issues. All these problems with programs have been addressed. Uh, so we've created the um, Frogrance technology. FSDL is the language. It's one component of the Frogrance technology. So you're probably wondering now, how does it work? It works with layers. I know that in this uh, school you study telcos. And a lot of you are probably familiar with um, this kind of architecture, architectural layers. So here we have internet, which we've simplified in three layers. We could probably add additional layers, but let's stick it to three. So the Frogan's technology here is at the third level, which means that it, use, it uses the two other layers, the traffic and routing layers uh, of uh, the web. And it comes in with different standards and norms, exactly the same way uh, IRC or mail are using uh, the web. So it's called the Frogrance technology. It's, uh, it's a generic application. It's an open standard. Um, so using this as a user or uh, an online publisher, you can develop your sites. You can create online experience using Frogrance technology. Again, it is a generic um, internet-based application. So we work hand in hand with internet, and um, of course we are very fortunate to have so much network power uh, today. So this is where we stand. So who is OP3FT? OP3FT is a, a little bit of a strange name. OP3FT um, stands for Organization for the Promotion Protection Progress of the Frogrance Technology. OP3FT, approximately 30 staff, mainly based in France. Technically speaking, legally speaking, uh, and these 30 people promote this new standard. 
it is um, an open standard. It is available to everyone. And when I say this, I mean it. It's absolutely available to anyone. And we're not developing, you know, a, a technology for people who are living in certain areas where they have, you know, very high speed access or we're developing technology for people who have access to the latest, uh, you know, latest devices. We're not doing this. That's not our position. We're not saying we're addressing one type of audience. Again, let me be clear. At OP3FT, we work for everyone. And um, if you do not have the latest device, if you do not have very high speed access, um, well, it's, um, it's okay. Uh, you may live in rural or fairly remote areas. You may uh, live in an environment where you have to share your computer with other people. Um, and yet, for those people, uh, access to internet uh, can uh, bring significant change. So uh, that's why we serve the uh, general interest, the public interest. Of course, our ac activities and actions are not limited to France, where it's really a global organization. So this is our position. Frogrance is a technology which has been uh, presented many, many times around the world. Here is a picture of FTC4. This, this was the previous conference which was held right before the summer. Uh, we talked about the uh, ecosystem uh, during that conference. This is Paul uh, Makapetris. Um, he is the inventor of the creator of DNS. Uh, DNS, for the, some, some of you may be familiar with DNS. Uh, it's on, uh, you know, d domain names. And so Paul came in and um, told us to tell us about the power of uh, Frogrance technology and new applications that use Frogrance technology. Our partners are Afnic, ICANN, OP3FT is also the uh, regulating body of uh, Frogrance technology. ICANN manages internet and uh, OP3FT manages Frogrance technology or supervises Frogrance technology. As, uh, as an organization, we've attended different uh, events and conferences. Uh, INTA, for example, ICANN, of course. Um, INTA is for is a conference on, on, on brands and brand um, equity or um, intellectual property. So again, we're coming in and we're telling them that we're here to with a new technology that they can use to communicate their brand to uh, various audiences. French Tech as well. <coughs> French Tech is a partner as well, um, and again, we're, it's about sharing technology. We're, we've been traveling to countries like Russia, Japan, China, Latin America as well, to present and introduce Frogrance technology and uh, how Frogrance can help these economies and again can support um, online publishers to um, create wealth and create jobs which they could not do so far. Next slide. This is a little, this is a very busy slide. I'll keep it simple. Uh, just now, I talked about people. So you're probably wondering, who are these people? Well, there are a lot of different categories of people. We have uh, four quadrants here. Top left is production. It's uh, we're, today we're going to mainly talk to that quadrant today, the production, because they that includes design. On the right side, we have publishing, top right. Uh, on the bottom right, we have standardization, and bottom uh, left, we have operation. And in red, we have people, that red box is people who use Frogrance sites, people who produce on online content. So, right now we're more on the left side, you know, web designers, HTMS, uh, HTML, uh, these are people who create sites and who are looking for standards and tools to make sure that their work, that their creative work, their 
pub publications they're publishing will be received by whoever they're targeting. So all these categories are stakeholders of uh, fragrance. Some use fragrance, uh, some use fragrance to, to create uh, services or experiences. So once again, right now we are on, uh, on the top uh, quadrant. And we're going to sh I'm going to show you how people involved with production, online production, can use this new fragrance technology to create new sites and a, a new experience. Slide suivant, s'il vous plaît. Alors, next slide. Um, I talked about fragrance, so the fragrance sites. Let me just clarify this. Frogan sites are a different type of sites. We're not recycling old or existing technologies, uh, you know, uh, to make them better. This is, Frogan's is completely new. We're creating our own sites with their own features. And uh, remember earlier on I was talking about uh, the online publishing landscape. Here are Frogan's, well, here are the particularities uh, of Frogan's sites. Frogan's sites, for example, are very small, um, so, which means restricted space. Uh, think about um, things that are compact, brief, um, a little bit like uh, Twitter, for example. You have 140 letters maximum per tweet. It's the same thing here. You're, we're going to be using the word frame or canvas. It's That's the, the space within which you can operate to develop your sites. It's not a very big frame. It's, it's fairly big, but it's not very big because, again, you are, you're simply, that, that, that's the way the, the Frogan's architecture is designed, so small. Second thing, they can be loaded pretty quickly. So, pretty quickly means when I'm in nomadic mode, I take my smartphone, I download an app. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's very quick, depending on the bandwidth which is available. Here, with the Frogan's technology, we limit ourselves to a certain volume of information, and it's because information volume is limited that we can guarantee a rather fast response time. So we make tests, we try and put ourselves in difficult conditions. We can be in difficult bandwidth conditions in the metro here in Paris, but also in rural areas or in countries which are not necessarily equipped with the latest uh, cell phone technologies. So fast execution is important <coughs> because people won't accept to wait for hours to get a website on their screen. Portability. That's a third thing. Being port portability means to be available on all connected screens. So we'll show you three examples here, mostly. We'll show you uh, operating systems uh, available on computers, but we're also available on smartphones, tablets, and for the at the basis of the Frogan technology and OB3FT, the idea is to become available on connected TVs, on uh, connected objects. As soon as you have an, a screen, in fact, we will be able to publish Frogan sites on those screens if they're connected, of course. But portability is important for us. And how does it translate? Well, it translates through a rather complex management system. And in certain cases, we can easily publish Frogan sites on a certain type of connected screens. In other cases, it requires a bit more time to uh, get adapted. But we have an ambition 
to be available on all potential screens, connected screens. Fourth point, creativity. And we'll have a tutorial on that. So I'll skip this very quickly. But on these prototypes, you can see that Frogan's sides do not look like what you've seen so far. The, the shape of these uh, sides is not dictated by the uh, designer of the browser. You're the one who decides on the shape of your site. Here you have square sites, round shaped uh, sites. The Frogans technology gives you the key for both the uh, shape and the transparency effect, which is not available in any other technology. Ease of use, so user friendly, that's a set of rules in Frogans that make sure that navigation is very simple on a Frogan site. You have a series of click buttons which are very easily identified. There is no specific script that's going to do things that you're not expecting. So you have control over your experience and you are the ones, you the user, you are the ones who can trigger a series of events. No one is going to do that for you and it's quite comfortable. Then security, in our Frogan's layer, we have a certain number of uh, security standards and key exchanges, so when you connect a site, it's the server that was declared for this site, and that's secured. There is no man in the middle. And we talk about security as well for at the end user, because when you navigate on a Frogan site, I know that Frogan's player is not going to execute scripts locally, is not going to take over uh, my uh, device and is not going to retrieve information without my knowing. Uh, so all these problems which currently exist on the web do not exist in the Frogan's uh, environment. And then international development. Maybe this is uh, of less importance for us in this room today, but for 85% of people on this planet, this is important because most uh, publishing technologies so far were designed in an English-speaking word with uh, the Latin alphabet, whereas the Frogan's technology is available native in, a, in more than 180 languages and allows for the use of many different letters and characters, whether Thai, Chinese, Indian, Arabic, Greek, Cyrillic, on top of Latin alphabet. And I'm obviously missing many of these. And the content of the address and the content of the Frogan sites can be published in these languages, and that's very important. Because if I'm Chinese, for instance, and my audience is mostly Chinese, I can create a Chinese Frogan's website in Chinese, and I can select between um, simple Chinese and complex Chinese. So it's, and this is done natively. So, this is a bit tedious, but this is just to provide you with a bit of background. Then we'll have more concrete examples so that you can see how this is done. So, the address. It's quite short, easily easy to recognize, and it's available in any language. So it's short, because of Frogan's address, that's a guarantee for the future. It's a word, a star, and another word. No longer any HTTP, slash, slash, whatever. No, it's very simple. It's word, star, word. The, the first word is the network name, and the second word is the site name. The star is um, the distinctive sign of the Frogan's technology. When you see a star in an address, uh, 
It is a Fogan's address, <laughs> and this star is not changing depending on the languages. It's still the same, so you have the network name, star, site name, and this in the different uh, language categories that I talked about earlier. So, now we at OP3FT were also in charge of making a software available that's going to be available on all these platforms, and that's the Frogan's Player. Why Frogan's Player? Because it's going to play an FSDL co code, which is a description of the site, and Frogan's Player is very easy to use, it's secure, and it's free of charge. So in 10 minutes, we We'll make the f we'll have the release of the first multi-platform Frogan's player, which will be available on our website. And this, as soon as I'm finished with this presentation. So FSDL version 3.0 was finalized today, and as of today, I'm making the solemn announcement that this. A language, FSDL, is available. <coughs> of course, this is not the final version, but almost. 95% of FSDL 3.0 will be the uh, final language. It's an open standard, open source standard, and it's a site description language. So we're not programming. We're not following instructions to tell the machine to do this and that. FSDL allows to describe slides and then the slides are read and displayed. These are not dynamic websites then, these are static websites, but they're all controlled by the user. They're written with an XML grammar. So those of you who are used to programming language, you're all familiar with XML, it's very simple. It's a format that allows you to find your way. So it's a very strict SML. We will ask you to close the brackets, for instance, and it's a very easy to read XML and anyone who has a certain level of uh, uh, familiarity it's very easy to read the descriptions included in the site. And last thing, it's a language that allowed to put structure and content together. All this is mixed, and it's very nice, in, in fact, to describe a Frogan's site. This is what we'll do together this afternoon. And last thing is that in FSDL we've included a certain number of creative functionalities that will allow people who want to publish text to have fun, so to speak. And for those who want to publish video content, or they will have real fun, because FSDL includes functionalities that look like what's going on in Photoshop, and we have uh, the idea of layers here as well. You have functionalities like filters, etc. And for those of you who are familiar with these tools and with other pieces of software, you will see that in one single environment you'll be able to combine various functionalities and in a very little time you can create highly creative, highly attractive websites. Okay, so, in conclusion, almost. We'll ask you to participate. Because, as I said, Frogan's technology is an open source format, so it's designed by the OP3FT, but also by the community of developers. So for those of you present in the room, and for those of you uh, listening to us online, we will ask you 
or we will give you the opportunity to participate and give us your feedback. So, but it's only if you're willing to become a contributor. And if you want to do so, it's very simple. You can send us feedback on two things. First, about FSDL as such. You'll see the language has a certain syntax. And each syntax defines elements and attributes. And attributes will have certain values. They can be optional or mandatory. So we wait, we expect feedback from you on this. And feel free to tell us it would be better if such and such attribute was not mandatory, for instance. Then there are applicability rules. We work in a closed environment and there are rules saying, OK, we can have two big buttons, for instance, so there again, we will ask you your feedback about this. Second part of, or second type of feedback you can give us about the about Frogans is about the Frogans player. We'll display a an alpha version of this for the validation of FSDL documents, of including error messages. Feel free to look at this. In some cases, it's going to be very useful for us if you give us feedback. Feel free to tell us, well, this is not very clear. Um, you can give us feedback even on, on the name of the options in the different menus. And all this feedback, well, you can send it to this address. We're using a um, mailing list. We informed people who signed up for the mailing list, we informed them about this uh, Frogan's Technology Conference, but we are opening another mailing list called Early Questions at the following address, as uh, shown on the screen. This is where you can ask all your questions, and we will answer to all your questions. Okay, what are we going to do with your feedback? Well, we will include your feedback to our Frogan's technology rollout plan. We're currently in what we call the priority registration period for entrepreneurs, so we give people like you the possibility of um, having registration for their Frogan's network name. Uh, September today, release of FSDL and Frogan's player for developers. And uh, early 2016, we will open the Frogan's core registry so that people can start publishing Frogan's site that can be seen by anyone. So between now and beginning of 2016, we will include your feedback in the future development of the Frogans and FSDL technologies and beginning of 2016, we will launch the official version of the Frogans technology. Okay, so in order to get FSDL, what do you need to do? You need to log on get.frogans so it's on our own GTLD. You have a page that explains how you can download Frogan's player. Once again, this is an alpha version. <laughs> so it sometimes bugs a bit, and of course you'll be looking for the weak points. You can also log on, Fro then you can log on frogans.org, where you can download a 20, 30 pages long document explaining all the functionalities of the Frogans elements, how it works, what's the, FS, the syntax of FSDL, so that you can start writing the code. So visit get.frogans and download the Frogans player.
Over to you.